The sound that greets you at Wolf Hollow in Ipswich will stop you in your tracks. Howling is a, a great form of communication over distance, and there's somewhere between 20 and 25 different vocalizations for different reasons. Z Sofrin has been around wolves as long as he can remember. It's an unspoken kind of communication with them. When you're in there, you're entering their world. Hi, good afternoon. This is Wolf Hollow. How can I help you today? This nonprofit sanctuary and visitor center opened in 1990 as the dream of Sofrin's late father, Paul. These seven wolves were born in captivity at other sanctuaries. One wolf-dog hybrid is a rescue. Wolf Hollow's mission, educating the public about these misunderstood animals. We've been using the wolf as the bad guy for close to 3,000 years, starting with Aesop's fairy tales. When wolves are a very curious and also shy animal, they're not this you know, ravenous, you know, vicious creature that you know, we've made them out to be for so long. Sweetie. With the little ones, I can you know, kind of pick them up, play with them a little more hands-on. Aquila and Kuntaka are part Arctic and part timber wolf. Nearly three years old, they grew up here with the help of adoptive wolf parents, Sofrin, and caretaker Kevin Kenny. Kuntaka's always a big fan of a belly rub for her first uh, kind of greeting and saying hi. And then Aquila does the same by checking my teeth, right? In a wolf pack, only the alphas who dominate are the breeding pair. Others have to leave the pack to start a family, says Sofrin. If you stay in a wolf pack for your entire life, you are never going to make the rules and you're called what's a celibate subordinate. That's important for population control and also genetic diversity. No wolves live in the Northeast. Across the country, the numbers are minuscule. Upon European arrival, we had upwards of two to three million wolves on the continent. And by 1973, we had literally about 250 wolves left in the lower 48. We're up to about five to 6,000 wolves in the lower 48 today. That might seem like a lot, but it is comparable to the five to 6,000 coyotes we have just in Massachusetts. They definitely need all the friends they can get. These guys are mostly found in Bolivia. It's not a baby, but it's a small bird and uh, just super colorful, super popular. This ivory-billed Arkari is a member of the Toucan family. She's part of a menagerie here in Bolton at Animal Adventures Family Zoo and Rescue Center. An armadillo, an arctic fox, even a Gila monster. It's one of only a couple of venomous lizards in the world. Founder Edward Lacuadera says that since 1997, Animal Adventures has been taking in mostly unwanted, injured, or abandoned animals. We kind of specialize in animals that aren't perfect. Some of those animals can be adopted. Others stay here. Lacuadera, who is a zoologist, says baby animals are often in the mix. Storybook adorable bunnies, curly-haired baby guinea pigs. I'm over here pretty much every single night, you know, and I can just go and sit with the baby animal and life is good. Sometimes the babies are so small, the public is not allowed to see them. The sugar gliders are marsupials from Australia. They'll be a tiny little baby, very similar to a kangaroo, and the baby lives inside the pouch. He's probably about a month old. Lacuadera says despite their allure, people should think hard about having an unusual pet. It's just my opinion that you don't want to impulse buy an exotic animal. Animals kept illegally can put everyone in a bind. And what it does is now the person can't bring that animal to a veterinarian. If the veterinarian can't see an illegal animal, well, he can lose their license. So now you have an animal that someone owns that could be sick and they're afraid to tell anybody. And being a good pet parent is an animal's creature comfort. You're literally responsible 100% for that animal's well-being. I think animals just bring so much joy and happiness to people. <laughs> Oh, and back to the wolves. Z Sofren teaches art to middle schoolers when he's not at Wolf Hollow, which is equipped with areas for public viewing and presentations. He tells us that Wolf Hollow is allowed to have a breeding program, but his team prefers to work with other sanctuaries instead, especially if pups are born elsewhere and need a new home. That is Chronicle for tonight. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Shana Seymour. We hope to see you back here tomorrow night for another edition of Chronicle. Good night.